We are going to get started. Good evening and welcome to Training Tuesday. My name is Bill Brown. I am the director of New Faith Expressions for the Baltimore Washington Conference. And along with my colleague, Reverend Rodney Smothers, we're your hosts for Training Tuesday. Um, Rodney is on some much deserved renewal leave. So he is resting and relaxing. And uh, let me uh, lead these this uh, for the next couple of weeks. So get some good rest, Rodney. Tonight's Training Tuesday is entitled Discovering a Pathway to Peace When Life Feels Off Track. Now, to be honest, this was scheduled for, in, for March at two of our Connect Leadership Summits, or one of our Connect Leadership Summits down in the Southern region, and we had to postpone that. So it's kind of a God thing, I would say, because for those of us who are going through this quarantine together, life does seem a little off track. I'll introduce our presenter in a moment, but first I'd like to open us with a word of prayer. So would you bow your heads with me and let us join together in prayer. Holy and gracious God, as we gather this evening from wherever we are, we are constantly reminded that even though we are alone, we are in this together. We're also reminded that we are never alone because we know, O oh God, that you are present with us. And so as we gather, we claim that, O oh God, that we are gathered two or three in your name. We are prepared to experience your presence with us tonight. So I ask for your blessing and your spirit to be on our presenter, James Tate, to be on those in our audience that we would be uplifted and guided during this time that perhaps by your grace, our life would get back on track. So be with us tonight, O oh God, as we come to learn, as we come to grow. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So before we do some introductions, a couple of um, housekeeping rules we go over with every Training Tuesday, because I've already seen someone's raised their hand. You don't need to raise your hand. If you have a question, You'll notice that there is a Q&A button as part of Zoom, and you can ask your question. We're going to hold most of the questions till the end uh, so that um, James has a chance to present this evening. Also, this recording will be available uh, sometime either tomorrow or later this week, and all the slides that James is using tonight will also be available when the video is made public. Now, when you registered for tonight's Training Tuesday, you were also sent a link for a Living Compass assessment. If by some chance you did not take the assessment prior to tonight's Training Tuesday, do not worry. I've got it under good authority from our presenter that you can still uh, participate in tonight's uh, webinar and presentation and take the Living Compass at another time. So that's enough from me. Let me introduce to you our presenter tonight. His name is James Tate. His personal journey to lose and keep off weight resulted in him establishing Beyond Weight Loss Total Wellness Center, which is a Christ-led holistic wellness center. You are a certified integrative nutrition health coach, a nutrition therapist, a clinical weight loss practitioner, and a sports and exercise nutritional advisor. You're also a certified health minister through Wesley Theological Seminary. You grew up in Washington, D.C. You're an award-winning children's book author and the director of the Body by Christ Ministry at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Um, and Body, um, Body by Christ is Believers Overcoming Destructive Yokes. You're also a devoted husband and father of three children. So I was also given the warning, if you hear kids in the background, they're James's and that's okay. After eight weeks of Zoom calls and quarantine, we're used to pets running onto the screens and our children in the background. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to James, turn off my video and listen and learn as well. So welcome James, thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me. And hello, everybody. Good evening. I pray that all is well. I pray that you guys are healthy. <clears throat> and I'm honored to be here to uh, speak to you and to tell you some things about Living Compass. So I'm going to share my screen with you all right now.
All right, so welcome to Living Compass. So a little bit about myself. That is <clears throat> me and that's me. So on the left, that's uh, James BC or James before Christ. A um, little bit, of, I was an overweight child, overweight teenager, uh, overweight adult. Uh, I played football and my football playing weight was 275 or 280 pounds between there. Um, after that, after college, my weight went up to 330. And in 2007, I was involved in an accident that damaged the entire left side of my body. I had three years of physical therapy. And uh, after that, my weight went up to 415 pounds. And my doctors told me my injuries would not heal if I did not lose the weight. Um, but being as though I was big my entire life, I didn't think it was possible. And so 2010, my brother invited me back to church. And so I rededicated my life to Christ New Year's service, 2010, and the theme of, uh, the theme for that year was beyond beyond, uh, based on the scripture that says God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so I prayed for beyond beyond weight loss and healing. And we started with the Daniel fast. We always start with the Daniel fast at the beginning of the year, and that was the first time I ever fasted in my life. I've never gone two days without a chicken wing, if I can be honest with you. So that was the first time I ever fasted, and we fasted for 21 days. And so during that fast, uh, I went into the church bookstore. And if anyone's uh, familiar with FBCG, it's a big church or what's considered a mega church, and we have a huge bookstore. But when I went into the bookstore one day, there was only one book on one of the large shelves, and that book was titled What Would Jesus Eat? So I purchased that book. And I read that book and I started to study every uh, wellness scripture, every nutrition scripture in the Bible and started to apply it. And so the Daniel fast was over after 21 days and I realized I didn't die and I liked the way that I felt. So I continued eating that way and applying, um, you know, what God says to eat, what he says to stay away from. I started praying and asking God to show me what to eat, what's my meal plan, what's best for me. And long story short, at the end of 2010, by December 2010, my weight went from 415 pounds to 205 pounds. And that's uh, without any surgery, any fads or any gimmicks. And God really showed up and showed out. And he basically reintroduced himself to me and showed me his, his power and how much that he loved me. And so he blessed me to lose and keep off over 200 pounds. And of course, when you lose weight, everyone wants to ask you, what did you do? And so I had a little bit of nutrition knowledge from studying the Bible. And people told me, recommended that I should go to nutrition school. And so I went to nutrition school. Well, I called nutrition school and they gave me a partial scholarship, but I still could not afford the rest of the tuition. And so I prayed, I said, God, if you want me to go to nutrition school, you have to make a way. And so my tax return for that year was for the remaining balance of the school to the penny. So I just gave them <laughs> my tax return, went to school, got my first certification, and the rest is history. And so I'm very passionate about educating, uh, teaching God's people about health and wellness. And Living Compass is one of the tools that I use um, because in the book of Hosea, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And God wants us to be healthy because when we're healthy, we're able to do what he has called us to do. So uh, we're all Christians, so I always like to start off with scripture. So I'm going to share a few uh, scriptures with you all, a few wellness scriptures. So this is 3 John 1 and 2. Uh, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, what's important about that is that he says be in health. Because without your health, you can't do anything except pray to God. And so what I find is that a lot of us, especially Christians, we have our priorities out of whack or out of order. Uh, God should always be number one. And number two should be your health. And I know a lot of people will probably look at me funny, but if you've ever been on an airplane, when they ever go over the instructions, they always tell you, in case of an emergency, you have to put your mask on first before you help anyone else. Without your health, you cannot love your spouse the way you want to, love and care for your children. You can't work. You can't go on vacation. 
you can't do anything without your health. So it's time for us to actually start focusing on our health and on the temples that God has loaned to us. John 15, five, this is why God is always number one. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Uh, and this last sentence is key, for without me, you can do nothing. And that includes losing weight. That includes being healthy. That includes anything. So he always has to be number one because without him, we can't do anything. So what is Living Compass? Uh, Living Compass was created by the Reverend Dr. D. Scott Stoner and his wife, Holly Hughes Stoner. Uh, Living Compass provides resources, coaching, education, training and support to individuals, families, and congregations as they seek the wholeness God intends for us all. Uh, one of the great things about this program is that it actually breaks it down to different categories. So they have an adult living compass, they have a teen living compass, they have a parent's living compass, a family living compass, as you'll see as we go um, further into this presentation. Living Compass is a program that creates the opportunity for people to pause, and check their bearings to figure out where they are and where they are headed, and then adjust their course as necessary. The great thing about the Living Compass is that you can take it multiple times a year, because as the year or as time goes on, things change in our lives. Um, as, with, as with this uh, COVID-19, uh, that threw a wrench into a lot of people's plans, a lot of people's way of living. And so if you took the living compass in January versus the living compass in April or May, it may look completely different. Living compass believes in the healing and restorative power of authentic conversations. You have to communicate and you have to talk. It's very, very important. You can, it, there's no such thing as a silent living compass session. Uh, Living Compass Wellness Circle seeks to foster, foster authentic conversations among church members. So we have to talk. If, you, if you're not outgoing, if, if you're a shy person, uh, if you don't like to talk, or maybe you don't like people, <laughs> there's some people that don't like people, but you have to be able to talk in order to have a wellness circle or to have a successful uh, Living Compass session. The thing is, is that where you may be weak, God is strong. And so if your gift is not, if you're not a, uh, if your gift is not speaking or speaking in public or um, even speaking to people, um, where you lack, the Holy Spirit can feel that. And so this is why it's always important to have God included in this and in everything else. So let's talk about whole per person wellness or holistic wellness. That's all holistic means is whole person wellness. Um, we must make sure we are well in every single area. And those areas are mentally, spiritually, emotionally, as well as physically. Um, when people think about health, most of the times they think about physical health. Nowadays that mental health is a, is a big talking point and a major topic. They think about mentally healthy. Um, but also that includes emotionally healthy as well as spiritually healthy because um, a lot of church leaders right now are spiritually drained. And so um, you have some pastors who have to take sabbaticals. Um, unfortunately, you've had pastors that have committed suicide because they are spiritually drained. And so one of the things that um, we have to do is we put things like the Living Compass in place as well as uh, wellness ministries and health ministries um, not just to um, check on or to take care of our community as well as the members of the church, but also the leaders of the church, um, because they're constantly pouring out to everyone, but eventually they run empty and you cannot pour from an empty cup. So you want to make sure that somebody is filling them so they can continue to pour out to others. Uh, wellness is a way of living, not a destination to be achieved. I have to uh, say that often because a lot of people, they have a destination. I wanna lose this amount of weight in this amount of time because my class reunion is coming up or we have a cruise or it's always, <laughs> it's always something like that. But this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. This is for the rest of your life. So wellness has to become a way of living. That's why a lot of fad diets don't work. And I always say that diet stands for do I eat this? That's all it stands for. And so 
It has to be something that can be sustainable over the rest of your life. A person moves in and out of wellness many times through their life. The goal is to be proactive and intentional with our choices. As Christians, whole person wellness means that we are called to seek wholeness in all aspects of our lives. Um, one of the, one of the uh, examples I like to use is just imagine if you were watching any news station and breaking news came over the, the TV. And during that breaking news, they said that uh, breaking news, breaking news, Christians are the healthiest people on the planet. They have the lowest cases of obesity, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, strokes, sleep apnea, the list goes on and on. When people, if people were to hear that, just imagine how packed your church will be. Or if your church is already packed, imagine the additions that would have to be built onto it. Um, because everyone is chasing health. The number one prayer request in churches across, across America is for something health related. Yet, 95% of chronic illnesses are caused by poor food choices. So we bring a lot of these things onto ourselves. And I really think that right now God is slowing us down because he wants us to focus on our health because he's going to have a lot of things for us to do. So we have to make sure that we seek wholeness in all aspects of our lives and continue to make our health a priority. Um, because people know that we serve the God who heals, who is Jehovah Rapha. But we, we're supposed to go and make disciples. But we can't talk about how great God is if we're always complaining about our health and then tell somebody else that God is a great healer and we're always sick because most of the times we bring it on ourselves. We do this by allowing God and our faith to be our compass in all dimensions for our well-being. Uh, don't do it for self, to be narcissistic. Um, you want to do it to honor God and to show the love of God to our neighbors. Put the we in wellness. This is a we thing. It's not an I thing. When you replace I with we, even illness will become wellness. So one of the things that um, that I've found, the more and more I work with people, talk to people, especially churches. That's, that's what I love to do is to work with churches and help them with their health ministries and to educate them on um, healthy living, is I always ask people, do you know your worth? And so right here in this picture is a 2021 Cadillac Escalade, which is a very expensive SUV. This SUV is uh, over $100,000. And so the reason that I would show a picture like this is I usually ask people, if you were to own this SUV, what type of fuel would you put in it? And because you can't answer me, I'll go ahead and give you the answer that I normally receive. And so most people will raise their hand and say, oh, I'll put premium or 93 octane. Um, with a car like this, you have to put the best of the best in it in order for it to run properly. Well, guess what? The same goes with your temple. Your temple, this body that God loaned to us, is a multi-million dollar machine. It is the most complex thing ever created, where scientists and doctors are still discovering things about the body today. <clears throat> also, the body is the most expensive thing that most of us will ever own. The average human body is valued at $45 million. Now keep in mind, this SUV is $100,000. And most people will say they will put the best of the best or the 93 octane fuel in this vehicle. Now you're in possession of a multi-million dollar vessel. What type of fuel did you put into your body today? Now keep in mind, if you don't put premium fuel, and premium fuel does not have to be expensive, we're just talking about fruits and vegetables, uh, lean meats, water, things like that. If you're not, if you're just snacking all day, and it's uh, it's really easy to snack during this quarantine, but if you're not, if you cannot put regular fuel in a high performance vehicle and expect it to perform the way it was designed to perform, and the thing goes with our bodies, if we continue to put regular fuel in our temples, it's not going to perform the way it was supposed to perform, and that's when we get sluggish, we're tired. And we can't do what God has called us to do. Keep in mind, food 
is one of the hardest things to overcome. The original sin, the first sin ever committed had to do with people not being disciplined over what they eat. <laughs> I'm talking about Adam and Eve. And to this day, we continue to get in trouble by not being disciplined over what we eat. So I just want you guys to know that you have value. You are not worthless. Christ died for you and people say he paid the price. He paid a hefty price. So you're in possession of this multi-million dollar vehicle. Please take care of it. So for those that were able to complete the Living Compass assessment, you saw that the assessment consists of 80 questions uh, addressing the eight areas of wellness that make up life. All eight areas are interconnected and contribute to your overall well-being. Each one affects your health. Um, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is that there are different things in our lives that can affect our health. And we'll see that on the next slide. The results are merely a snapshot of your life at this moment. The results might have been different if you had taken it a month ago, or you may, it may be different if you take it a month from now, because life is always changing. So like I said, if you took it in January, and then you took it in April when the quarantine and everyone, everything was shut down, guaranteed your uh, compass would look different. So this is uh, a completed compass. The shaded end areas let people know. Hopefully you can see my little cursor. But the shaded end areas are the scores. So it, it scores from zero to 100. Um, and so when you take the assessment and you do the average or you add it up, each area will have a number and you can shade it in there. So these are the areas of the compass. So you have strength, which is care for the body, and stress or stress management, how you handle stress. You have the mind, which is work and school, and then organization. Um, how are you with work? How are you with school? And how organized are you? Because believe it or not, uh, organ being organized or not organized can affect your health greatly. You have uh, the soul area, which is your spirituality, and rest and play. You have your heart area, which is uh, emotions as well as relationships. So all of these things can affect your health positively or negatively. And you will see that once you take the assessment that some people are very strong in areas and some people are not strong in certain areas. So when I speak to a lot of Christians or I present at a lot of churches, a lot of them are strong in the spirituality aspect, especially leaders and pastors. They're strong in spirituality but they're bad at rest and play. They don't know how to rest and they don't know how to play. And just know that your body needs rest. And if you don't give your body the proper rest, it will force you to rest. And that is not a good feeling. Then you have others who are very, very good at spirituality, uh, but they don't handle stress well, or they're not organized at all. <laughs> they need help for everything. Then you have some people who are bad at relationships. So all of these things are areas to focus on when it comes to your health and wellness because each one can affect you. And then once you're done with the compass, you will be asked to map your journey. So this is once the assessment is taken, participants will complete the mapping your journey of growth and change and you will do this weekly. So if you were to have a wellness circle and your wellness circle, if you're the uh, facilitator and you have a wellness circle of six to no more than 10 people and they take the, the assessment and then you go over the assessment with them, what they will do is they will map their journey. And I'll show you some of the questions um, that are asked on that journey and they do it weekly when they meet with you weekly. So it will ask you to list the two to three areas of high satisfaction from your assessment. So going back to the compass, if your top three are relationships, care for the body, and emotions, you will list those. Then it will ask you the two to three areas of low satisfaction. And so you will list those if it's um, any of the other ones. If you're uh, rest and play, organization, spirituality, you will list those in that area of low satisfaction. And then it will ask you, what are you motivated to work on? 
So it gets people to thinking. There's a lot of writing. Well, not a lot of writing, but it's, it's good to write. And there's uh, recommended journaling for Living Compass. Um, because when you write things down and you can see it, it also shows you where you are at that day and time. So when you take it later on, months down the road, you can compare uh, to the previous to see how well you've done, how far along you've come. It's just like keeping a, a, a journal uh, with God, with your conversations with God, um, because God has to be in this. And so when you're mapping your journey, it's just another form of journaling. Another thing that it will ask you, it will say, if you look at your compass as a garden, what area do you feel needs more watering? And so that's, that's just another way to look at it um, because what you don't water does not grow. Um, if you know anything about farming or growing vegetables that you have to have uh, uh, fertile ground, you plant your seed, you have to water it, you have to give it adequate sunlight, and then you have to keep the weeds away from it. So if you notice that there's an area on the compass that you have low satisfaction, you're gonna to have to water that a little bit. Shine, shine the sun on it, the S-O-N, and also keep the weeds away from it so that it can continue to grow and flourish. It will also say, um, what's an area of whole person wellness you wish to address in this program? So that is something, and when you ask questions like this, this is a way to get people to talk, because like I said, some people don't like to share, some people don't like to talk, but when you ask questions like this, while they may not answer every question, there's at least one question that will be easy enough for them to ask, and it will help them to break out of their shell a little bit. Um, another thing that it will say, it will ask is to describe where you are right now in life in this area of wellness. So it will ask you, where are you right now today or the day that you take uh, the assessment, where are you in relationships or emotions? Where are you spirit in spirituality? Where are you in rest and play? Uh, where are you in resilience, care for the body, organization, or vocation? And also it will ask, it will tell you to describe what it will be like when you are where you and God want you to be in this area of wellness. God wants you to be successful because God has some assignments for us and he wants us to advance the kingdom. Um, one of the ways that I try to describe wellness, just like with that car, um, another, another way to look at that car is that a car has four tires, just like we have four areas of wellness, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. If one of those tires runs flat or gets low, gets low or is flat, we can't go to where God is trying to take us. But it doesn't make sense that if one tire is flat that we get out and slash the other three tires. That makes no sense at all. What we do is we fix that one tire, put some air in it so that we can go to where God is trying to take us. It's the same thing with this compass. If uh, a lot of it is a wake up call when people take the assessment and then they say, wow, I didn't know I was that low in this area. And some people may tend to get defeated. Just encourage them. Do not slash the other areas just because that one area is low. We're going to patch that tire, fill it up, and continue to keep moving forward. So this was a, this is an example of uh, well versus not well. And this is what I wanted to do in person. Um, uh, another thing with, with doing this on Zoom, because uh, Living Compass is very, very interactive and we work together, we talk, and we write a lot of things down, and we do a lot of projects during the training. Um, so I had to adjust a little bit. So I hope that you're able to um, <clears throat> at least try to picture this, what, picture what it is I'm trying to explain here with Well Not Well. But usually during the training, you have tables, um, and each table has about four to six people. And so what they do is we put these posters on each uh, table. And this is a big poster of the compass. And so it has it broken down, has each uh, category there, emotions, relationships, organization, rest in place, spirituality. And what we ask is that you draw a line down the middle, as you see here, with this line down the middle. And so on the left is not well, and on the right is well. <clears throat> and so we ask, what is an example of being not well when it comes to emotions? And then what are, what are examples of being well when it comes to emotions? So people always give uh, examples of not well 
versus well. And then another thing that we ask is if you if you can put a scripture that uh, put that right down a scripture that deals with each category um, about having positive emotions or being uh, having healthy relationships or being organized or how important spirituality is or how important rest and play is. And so it always ties everything together uh, because one of the most important things is that when you're well, it's a great feeling to be well in that category, but when you're not well, it's always good to have the sword of the spirit or the word of God to recite to yourself so that you can move over that line into the well category because Trust and believe that as the year goes on, you may be well today in one category, but something in life can happen. And next thing you know, you find yourself on the not well side. So writing everything out, it helps you to identify, okay, if I'm dealing with this, this, and this, that means I'm not on the, the, I'm on the not well side. and I need to get back on the well side. And the easiest way to get back on the well side is to spend time with God. Spend time with God, tell him your heart, tell him what you're struggling with, recite those scriptures, and then do your part so that we can move back over, excuse me, to the well side. So if you're, if you're sitting there right now, just think of some, uh, some examples of what does uh, care for the body or any category, but let's just say care for the body. If you're not well for care for the body, that means you don't exercise, you don't eat right, uh, you snack all day, you don't drink water, you drink sodas, uh, things like that. But care for the body on the well side means you exercise, you eat your vegetables, um, you give it rest, uh, things like that. So um, try, try that out at some point in time and, and try to see if you can come up with different things in each category for well versus not well, as well as coming up with uh, scriptures for each one. So another important part of <clears throat> Living Compass is the stages of change. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of the stages of change, but I'm gonna introduce them to you right now if you have not. So when you're in your wellness circle, um, one of the things that you'll have to do is you will have to identify where that person is or the people in your group, where they are um, when it comes to going from not well to well. So the first is pre-contemplation, which means they have no intention on uh, changing their behavior at all. Uh, then it goes to contemplation, which means, hey, I'm aware of a problem. I'm aware a problem exists, um, but there's no commitment to action. That's like saying, hey, the doctor tells you, hey, you have high blood pressure and we need to get the blood pressure down. And you're like, yeah, I know I have high blood pressure, but I'm going to keep eating what I eat. Then the next stage is preparation, um, where you're intent on taking action to address the problem. And then the next one is action, which is active modification of behavior. Then you have maintenance, which is sustained change. The new behavior replaces the old. And then there's relapse, which is falling back into old patterns of behavior. And so the stages of change can be applied to anything in life. It's not just living compass. Um, it definitely is really good to use when it comes to health and wellness uh, because you can uh, definitely find out where a person is, whether it comes to uh, trying to help them eat right or starting some type of exercise plan or anything. Um, so get familiar with the stages of change. They will definitely help you in your life in any uh, area of your life where um, you're well and also where you're not well. And if you're trying to become well, identify which area you're in for stages of change. And so here's another, I'm very big on visual, so here's another stages of change where we had uh, pre-contemplation, contemplation, he's thinking about getting in shape, uh, and losing weight. Then you have preparation where you actually start to read health tips. You have action where you actually get out and move your body. Maintenance, which is what you're doing to keep it. Um, you know, once you get close to your goal or you're, you actually get into some type of pattern 
or healthy habit, you, you have your maintenance there, but there's the relapse. So usually if we're in person, I would ask you what stages of change do these statements represent? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to do it anyway, if you can. If you have a paper, pencil, paper and pen, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you some questions and I want you to let me know which uh, stage of change it is. So let me go right back and I will show you. So we have pre-contemplation, which is number one, which is no intention on changing behavior. Then you have contemplation, which means you're aware a problem exists, but with no commitment to action. Preparation, your intent on taking action to address the problem. You have action, which is active modification of behavior. You have maintenance, which is sustained change. New behavior replaces the old, and then you have relapse. So this person says, I'm always stressed out, but what else is new? Everyone I know is stressed out. So these are some of the things that you may hear in a wellness circle. And then you, you have to identify where that person is. And once you know where that person is in the stage of change, it helps you to relate with them better. And it helps you to guide them to wellness once you know where they are. Um, <clears throat> because right now, a lot of times we put band-aids on things. It's always best for us to get to the root cause of the issue. And the stage of change helps us to get to the root cause. Another example is I'm going to try going to bed earlier so I can get up and try working out in the morning. So that is one that person actually has it on their mind to actually get up and try to work out. The third one says, I don't feel tired. I don't feel I don't like feeling tired all the time, but I'm wondering what, if anything, I can do about it. Maybe you may see yourself in some of these statements. I'm going to start a gratitude journal this week and write three things I am grateful for in it each day. Sounds like that person has it together and has a plan. The next one says, I can't believe how good I feel since I rebalanced my work schedule six months ago. So if you are writing, you know, write down what you think each of those are. I worry so much of the time and my friend always seems to be able to just let things go. I wish I had what she has. The next one says, I've lived this long without watching what I eat or exercise and so I don't need to start now. If I had a dollar for every time that I heard that, <laughs> especially in the churches, I hear that uh, from our seasoned citizens. You know, they're not senior, they're seasoned citizens. So I hear that often. I see no need for going to church. I can believe in God without going to church. I'm sure someone's heard that from someone before. I'm going to walk on the treadmill three times for three minutes over the next week. Sometimes I think about reading the Bible more often, but I don't think it really matters to God whether I do that or not. So try to keep those in mind. If you're writing down, write down what you think the stages of change those represent. So now, sometimes I think about reading the Bible more often. I'm going to talk to my rector to see if she has any good suggestions for how to start doing this. I heard about a new app that helps you budget and keep track of your finances. I'm going to download it and check it out. And then the last one says, my friend really likes his church. I've been thinking about going back to church. I'm gonna have lunch with him and ask him about his church. So,
We go back. I'm always stressed out, but what else is new? Everyone I know is stressed out. That's pre-contemplation. So here are the answers for those questions, and that's something that we can revisit. Like I said, if we were um, doing this in person, um, you all will be, you know, write down what you think it is, and then I will give you the answers as we go along. But that's something that we can do now. I don't know if that is, if that's boring via Zoom, but <laughs> but in person is very exciting to see which one lines up with which question. So maybe at the end, if you have questions, we can go back to the stages of change. But these are the answers to each question. Pre-contemplation. Uh, the second one is preparation. So I'm going to try going to bed earlier so I can get up and try working out in the morning. That is preparation. Then you have contemplation, uh, action, maintenance, contemplation. But we'll come back to this. Um, because it will be a lot of back and forth, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys have enough time to ask your questions. Um, but it's very, very important to identify what stage of change uh, each person is in. And so another thing that we do is we do a lot of role playing versus um, uh, we do a lot of role playing when we do training. So we will have two people come up to the front. And we will tell one person, hey, you are going to be in pre-contemplation and this is the topic. And so then you have to act it out and see if you can figure out what stage of change that person is in. So the role playing part is a, is a really fun part of the training. But of course, we can't do that right now. But hopefully in the near future, once all of this is over, um, we'll be able to meet in person and we can definitely uh, complete the in-person training so that we can have um, wellness circles uh, throughout Baltimore and Washington to help each other and also help our communities. So a reminder, remember, now these are very, very important um, because once someone is uh, certified in Living Compass or has gone through so many uh, wellness circles, um, they like, some people may think of themselves as an expert. But there, <laughs> there's always things that you have to keep in mind. And so we'll go over those. Remember, you are not a provider of direct care. That's very, very important. Number two, you are not addressing illness. Your focus is primarily raising awareness, offering prevention, and making them aware of all resources available. Um, so that's, that's important as well because uh, now, if it's someone like myself who has a background in, in holistic wellness, I may be able to give some uh, advice when it comes to certain things. But if you're not a doctor or you're not certi certified, don't try to diagnose anyone <laughs> with a certain and tell them that they have a certain type of illness. You are offering a ministry to help individuals build stronger relationship with God and with one another and to build community. Number one is to build stronger relationships with God. Remember John 15, five, we can do nothing without them. So the number one goal is to build, have that person build stronger relationships with God and with one another uh, because we, we, have, we, we are one body in Christ. And so we have to um, do our jobs and we have to be connected in order to do our jobs. Uh, and to build community. So those are very important. Facilitating is not. So if you are a facilitator of a wellness circle, facilitating is not therapy. Therapy focuses on healing, pains, and dysfunction. Living Compass focuses on each individual generating growth that is strategic and action-focused. Now, it may sometimes feel like a therapy session because sometimes emotions may get the best of a person and they cry out. Um, they're, not, they're frustrated with where they are and they may cry out. Um, but it's not a therapy circle or a therapy session. Uh, therapy definitely focus on healing pains and dysfunction. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to uh, get each individual to generate growth. It's not consulting. 
Consultants help diagnose a problem and prescribe appropriate solutions as an expert. Living Compass facilitators help participants find their own solutions and encourage them to be the expert in their own lives. I hope you understand that. So we are not consultants unless you are a consultant. That's another thing. But if you are not, you want to help them find their own solutions with God and encourage them to be the experts in their own lives. Uh, facilitating is not training. Trainers are instructors hoping to achieve specific objectives. Living Compass facilitators instead guide participants to create their own goals and objectives. Remember, we want to we want to help them. <clears throat> we want them to be able to to do it. You know, we we pretty much we help to guide, but we want them to to be able to do it with God because you have to have your own relationship with God. And so we want them to strengthen their relationship with God so God can help them to uh, fill those gaps wherever they may be. Facilitating is not mentoring. Mentors use their own experiences in specific areas to guide individuals. Living Compass facilitators guide a process. So to have a successful wellness circle, you need to use your oars. If you don't know what an oar is, like the oars you use to row your boat, right? So use your oars. O stands for open-ended questions. So examples of that are, how do you feel right now about the amount of stress in your life? Ask questions in a way that gets them to talk. Because like I said, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you will run into it if you haven't run into it before, that there are some people who will not talk at all. And so you try to ask open-ended questions to get them to speak. Um, and that helps um, tremendously in the wellness circles. A stands for affirm. I admire how open you are with sharing your fears about whatever that is. So you definitely want to affirm a person. No one wants to sit in a circle and feel like they're being picked on or they're being bashed or anything like that. So you definitely want to affirm the people in your circle. R stands for reflect. You want to slow your life down, but you believe that it is not possible at this time. You know God forgives you, but you, uh, you feel you cannot forgive yourself. So you want to reflect on what it is that person says to you because it shows, to you, shows them that you're listening to what they have to say. Because there's nothing worse than finally getting a person to open up and then they feel that you're not hearing anything that they're saying. So it's always good to reflect and repeat back what they said to you. S is for summarize. You feel like your job is taking over your life. You are concerned about the negative effect it is having on your health and on your family relationships. So you summarize what it is that they told you. So always use your oars. So questions that you wanna ask uh, in the wellness circles. Where is God in the midst of this change you wish to make? That's very, very important. And always remind them that, you know, that you have to have God in, that, in order to do anything. Share with them the scriptures, especially John 15, 5. That's one of, one of the scriptures that definitely helped me in my healing process. Um, but you definitely want to ask, where is God in the midst of this change you wish to make? Um, another question is, how does your faith support you in this change? Um, another thing is, is that everyone in your wellness circle may not be a Christian. I mean, I've had, I've been a part of wellness circles where um, you had some Christians, you had some Muslims, you had some atheists, you had, you name it, they're in the circle. And so you can ask them, how does your faith support you in this change? And it helps you to learn um, from each other. Uh, and so that is, that is another uh, question, an open-ended question that that may help, or, or it may help if somebody's not as strong in the Christian faith as you are. And so it helps you to also share how they can, uh, how God, just developing that relationship with God can help strengthen the faith so they can change. Um, another question is what scripture 
or scriptures come to mind when you think of this change? Um, so that once again, you have to know the scriptures. And so right now we are in the great technology age where you can Google anything. Or if you have the Bible app, you could just say, hey, uh, scriptures about whatever it is. And then it will come up with all of those scriptures and all of the different translations. Um, whereas back in the day, you really had to crack open the Bible and <laughs> thumb through and try to find uh, that scripture for that particular ailment or that, that issue that you may have. So uh, Google is a good thing when it comes to this, if you don't know a lot of scriptures, and it can definitely help point you to the scriptures so that you know where to go and you can uh, commit those to memory. Another question is, what spiritual practice will help ground this change for you? So that's another open-ended question as far as spiritual practices, whether it's prayer, whether it's uh, small groups, um, Bible study, um, listening to the word uh, from your pastor or your preacher, um, anything. What, what, type, what, can, what type of spiritual practices will help you? So of course we can't role play today. If we were face to face, we could probably role play or even, even uh, you know, if this is not over uh, for several more months and you wanna do another training, maybe we will do smaller Zoom sessions where we can have your faces in the boxes and we can definitely do uh, the role play exercise. So usually it's broken down in different groups. So you'll have group one, which will have heart topics, uh, group two will have soul topics, group three will have mind topics, and group four will have strength topics. So if you are in, say, the soul group or group two, here are questions that you will ask in the role play sessions. So one person will be a facilitator, another person will be a member of that group. And so that person will ask, do you have a personal spiritual practice? prayer, journaling, walking in nature, Bible study? Uh, are you active in a church community? Do you attend church regularly? Now, keep in mind, this is for the soul category. Uh, do you struggle with forgiving yourself or others? And so all of these questions will help you to identify where you're strong or where you're weak so that you can water those areas because remember, the Living Compass is focused on whole person health or holistic health mentally, spiritually, emotionally, or physically. Um, so just think about a chair, a four-legged chair. If one of those legs are missing, that chair cannot stand. So it's, it's really great if you can quote a thousand scriptures from the Bible. But if you cannot, if you're not eating right, <laughs> if you're not resting, if you're poor at relationships, um, if your attitude is poor, um, you know, you're not healthy. And so we want, we want to make sure that we are healthy and we want to help other people to be healthy as well, inside and out. Uh, so do you struggle with forgiving yourself or others? Uh, do you feel God has a purpose for your life? Do you live in alignment with that purpose? So that's a, that's a, a question where a lot of people, um, they actually sit back and even people that have been in the faith for years, they will, they will sit back and actually think like, wow, I really don't know. You'll be surprised how many people have no clue if God has a purpose for their life or what their gifts are or what, what their calling is. And so that causes a lot of stress for a lot of people that they see other people being blessed or operating in their gifting or the, or the talents that God has given them and they feel left out. And so some people may just leave the church just for that alone. So questions like this will definitely help you get to the bottom of um, why a lot of people feel or act the way that they act. Uh, how often do you play? That is another question. I know it's probably mostly adults on this, uh, on this training, but um, you'll probably ask yourself, play? I don't, I don't have time to play. I'm an adult. <laughs> well, you need to play. It's important. Um, whatever play looks like to you, uh, I have three small children. My oldest one is six. Um, my middle one is about to turn four, and my baby is about to turn three. So I play a lot. 
<laughs> I don't play with them, I hear about it until I play with them. So it's important that I include play in my um, daily routine. Do you have hobbies that you enjoy? Some people used to have hobbies, and for some reason, be, because they work so much um, on their job or they work so much in the church, they don't have time for their hobbies, which means that their attitude or um, they're not they're not the same person that they used to be because those hobbies gave them brought them so much joy, and so um, you know it helps people to identify. Well, hey, I have been a workaholic, or I have gotten away from some of the things that that made me happy. Let me get back to those. And maybe my, my health will start to increase once I start to water those areas again. I didn't even realize I went away from it. Do you get enough sleep? And do you take vacations? So I have some questions for the heart category. Are you handling your emotions or are they handling you? And hopefully on this training, some of these questions may speak to you, whether you took the, the living compass assessment or not. So if you took the assessment and you saw some areas that you weren't strong in, hopefully these questions will help identify some areas or different ways for you to water those areas. If you did not take the assessment, maybe some of these questions will start to bring some things up where you can actually start to think about yourself in terms of holistic wellness and what areas you need to water without even taking the assessment. So are you handling your emotions or are they handling you? And so now during this quarantine, that's a great question to ask people because watching the 24 by seven news, um, it can be stressful. I mean, you're hearing bad news after bad news. Um, you're in the house, especially for people who are very social and they can't get out and, um, for people whose love languages are uh, like physical touch. I mean, some people are huggers, especially in church. They just need to hug somebody, hug somebody or be around people. Uh, those people's emotions are out of whack right now. For most people, if you're not spending time with God, those emotions can handle, they're handling you right now. Are you comfortable feeling and expressing the full range of emotions? Are you concerned that you might be suffering from depression or anxiety? Are you comfortable listening and being present to someone else who is hurting? Um, some people don't have time for other people's hurt because they're hurting enough as it is, but um, that's a question that some people need to consider. How transparent and authentic are you in relationships? Do you turn to others when you need help? Are you or are you more of a lone ranger? Do you have any old unresolved wounds from your family or origin that affect the quality of your relationships today? And that's when I talk about getting to the root cause of a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of old unresolved wounds from family or something that happened in your past that affect the quality of relationships. Um, I, I used to work with clients one-on-one -on -one a lot and I nowadays I tend to work with groups uh, and I'm focused more on the churches right now and helping uh, church leaders um, get their health back as well as their congregation and helping churches go out in the communities to help their uh, community members so I'm more focused on churches more than the one-on-ones um, but in my past with one-on-ones for example I had one client who was a good friend of mine now and she always uh, loves for me to tell her story that she had old unresolved wounds and she came to me and she wanted to lose weight, right? Because the doctors told her she needed to lose weight. And so she's been, she went to so many different people and people would just say, Oh, you need to stop eating this. You need to stop eating that. Uh, you need to exercise more just the, the, the putting band-aids on things. And so I would ask her questions like this, open-ended questions and come to find out that she was uh, obese because of something that happened as a child. Uh, so she was uh, molested as a child. And she's, she's a, a very, very beautiful woman. And she was a, a cute little girl. And she was molested as a child. And everyone would tell her how beautiful she was. And so she started to eat. And the reason behind eating the wrong thing was I need to be as big as possible, number one, so I can fight back. 
And number two, because if I'm big, no one would think I'm pretty. And so she carried that all the way into her adult life. And so when somebody would just say, oh, you just need to exercise, stop eating burgers, stop eating fries so much, but you have to get to the root cause. And by asking questions like this and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, it allowed us to get to those old unresolved wounds so that then we can start the healing. So you'll probably, and I know that, you know, wellness circles are not therapy and things like that. But by open, asking open-ended questions like this, it will help you get to the root cause of a lot of issues so that person can go to God and they can heal with God. So, you know, don't take the questions lightly. They help a lot. Because I feel that we as Christians, we don't need to put band-aids or situations. We need to, and the Holy Spirit will show you and he will, he will definitely uh, show you how to help uh, certain people and certain groups as well. So we have questions for strength, for the strength category. Are you mindful about your nutrition and eating patterns? Are your eating choices primarily conscious or unconscious? Um, so are you eating because you're hungry? <laughs> because you, know, you don't really put gas in your car unless it needs fuel. Um, and so some people are conscious eaters, like, okay, I need to eat because I'm getting hungry and I need that fuel to carry me through for the next one, two, or three hours. Some people are unconscious eaters where they're at work, they eat their lunch, and then they walk past their coworker's desk, and their coworker has cupcakes or cookies on the ledge, and you grab the cookies or the cupcakes and you're not even hungry. Those are unconscious eaters. Are you getting enough exercise? What role do alcohol and other drugs play in your life? And are you content with that role? Um, believe it or not, you'll be surprised how many Christians can answer that question. <laughs> they, uh, you know, alcohol plays a big role. And for some, drugs play a big role as well. Do any of the following events or possible events bring stress into your life? Divorce or breakups? New relationships? A new child? A new job or loss of a job? finances, health issues, death of a loved one, or work stress. Now keep in mind, like I said, if someone took the compass in January and then they took the compass in April or May and they lost their job or had a death of a loved one, uh, death of a spouse, um, a child or their, their spouse gave birth to a child during a pandemic, that's stressful in, stressful in itself. Um, or having health issues. So uh, that's another thing. And then, you know, when, when stress comes about, uh, most people try to heal their stress with food. So that's a whole, uh, whole another thing that we need to focus on because uh, the Bible tells us to fear that 365 times because God knows what stress and anxiety can do uh, to the bodies that he created. So some questions for the mind. Um, do you have a sense of purpose in your work, school, or service? How do you relate to those whom you work, serve, or go to school with? Do you see a connection with your faith in your work, service, or school? Do you see how your work, school, or service fits into the bigger purpose of your life? And how well do you organize the things in your life, your time, your calendar, your finances, your living space, your grocery shopping, your meals, and your documents? How well do you organize those things? So the Living Compass Mindset is wellness is rooted in supportive community. It's all about community, coming together, being together, staying together. Um, we know that the, the Christian faith, uh, the Christian community is uh, full of people from different places, uh, different races. Um, and so we're all together. We're all one body in Christ. And so whether you're seen or not seen, you have a very important part in this body. Uh, some people are, phys uh, are visual, you know, hands, feet, eyes, mouth. Some people are tendons. Um, some people are ligaments. 
but everyone has to do their job. And so we need you so that we can uh, be one body in Christ and be together. Wellness is holistic. Everything is connected. Um, everything affects your health in one way or another. Um, the wisdom is in the group and in each person. Uh, facilitators, you can definitely learn from the people in your group and vice versa. Um, most people want to have healthy and happy lives, so they will want to change. We just have to identify where they are. Um, and it's about helping people to make the changes they want to make for themselves. And whatever we pay attention to will grow. So the last scripture I want to leave you with, and then we'll start taking questions, is 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. So when you eat, do it to the glory of God. When you drink, do it to the glory of God. When you serve, do it to the glory of God. So I want to thank you guys, and we're going to go ahead and open it up for Q&A. And if you have any questions, uh, let's go ahead and ask them. All right, James, thank you so much. I know I took my um, my compass, living compass uh, last week, and um, it's very eye-opening. And then add it to what you've shared with us tonight. Thank you very much uh, for bringing your passion and your knowledge and your faith uh, to us this evening. So if you do have questions, you can go to the Q&A box on your... Uh, computer screen. You can type in a question and we'll answer that as we wait for those. If you want, you can pull down your, um, if you want to stop sharing your screen for a second, there we go. Then we can see James full of life. Um, if you have a question, go to the Q&A feature. As we're waiting for some questions to come in, I want to share a couple of announcements. Um, this one is hot off the press for our next training Tuesday. That's going to be next week, May 26th. It's going to be a special training Tuesday for any of our churches who receive the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, to help during the COVID-19 crisis. Next Tuesday, Paul Eichelberger and members of the finance team will be presenting PPP forgiveness for Baltimore Washington Conference churches. So as you want to learn how to do the, uh, to get your uh, PPP forgiven so it doesn't become a loan, you're going to want to tune in next Tuesday. Registration will be going live uh, later this week. We'll also be collecting questions that you want answered. A form will be available on the conference website later this week uh, where you can ask specific questions that will be answered during the broadcast. And speaking of specific question, James, here we go for this evening. What training is required if you want to become a facilitator? How, do, how does one become a Living Compass facilitator? Okay, so Living Compass facilitator training is actually an in-person training. Um, that it, actually, if we did the in-person training and went through all the practices, you would be qualified to be a facilitator for a wellness circle in person. And so we will go through an entire uh, notebook. Let me see, I have a notebook here. We we'll actually go through this entire notebook during the training. The training is usually a couple of hours, but we take breaks. And so you go, we go through this notebook, we act out scenarios, we do the role playing. And so then you, are, you will be equipped to become a facilitator for wellness circles. So when we can look forward to being back together in person again, um, is there a is there some place people could go to find training that's close to us when the um, when we can get back together? Um, yeah. So actually, in this area, because most of the trainers are in Chicago. Okay. And so I am here on the East Coast, and there are a couple of us here. So if you would like to have training, just email me. And then we could set up training, and then I will actually uh, talk to the uh, the creators of the Living Compass so that we can get uh, your books and everything into your hands so that we can uh, have the training that way. So if you want more information, you can email James. I'm going to go slow with this email. His email <laughs> is beyond weight loss, but pay attention. It's beyond the letter W, the number 8 loss 
at gmail.com, beyondweightloss at gmail.com, and James can get more information about that. We've got another um, question. Well, you're getting some props tonight. So congrats, our great presentation, and congrats oh, on you. your mental, physical, and spiritual journey. Thank what you. are the top three challenges most people encounter starting a, a, a wholeness in a health program? Huh, okay, well, thank you for that. I'm glad I didn't bore you uh, for the person who, who asked that question. Uh, one of the top challenges that people have is, is just opening up and being vulnerable. A lot of people are so guarded and they shield uh, themselves. Some people don't like the group aspect um, and speaking in front of people that they don't know. That's why it's always good to have uh, wellness circles amongst people that you know in your uh, own churches and, and, and things like own groups. And so uh, <clears throat> people open it up. A lot of people don't, they, how can I say it? A lot of people, they don't like when people tell them where they're weak or where they're lacking. So a lot of those eye-opening things, they hurt, they sting, and some people think that they're good in one area, and after the assessment, they figure out they're not as strong as they, they thought they were. And so that kind of stings a little bit, and it helps people, I mean, it makes people retreat or uh, like a turtle in the shell, go into the shell and not want to come out. Those are usually the most challenging things, but that's why when you use your oars, you have to affirm them and let them know uh, you know, just you just affirm them, let them know that they're loved, that God loves them, that you love them, and it brings them out of their shell. Well, we want to affirm you, James, another great teaching. Thank you from one of our participants. Um, I just want to make sure if anybody has a question, please post those now. Um, if you don't, we can wrap up early. All right, just as a reminder, next Tuesday, we'll have a presentation on how if you applied for and received the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program, funding um, from the CARES Act, and want to learn how you can make sure that that funding becomes a forgivable loan or a grant instead of a loan, um, please um, keep your eyes open for registration for next week's Training Tuesday. In the coming weeks, we'll have Training Tuesdays on Discipleship Pathways, on different ways to generate um, some streams of income during this time of virtual church. We'll have a presentation coming up in June on revisioning ministry, and we're gonna round out the month of June with multi-generational leadership for the 22nd century. These are all gonna be an e-connection, so you don't have to memorize any of that. We just wanna make sure you know what's coming up as we look forward to providing more of these training opportunities. Here, uh, questions come in. I let you decide if you can answer. One of our participants um, tells us that they were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes last November. Mm -hmm. They were put on daily insulin injections and they met with a nutritionist to change their diet. They're no longer diabetic, but they need inspiration to stick to a workout routine. What can you say to us to stay motivated? Well, first, congratulations on being no longer diabetic. I definitely applaud that. Um, that is definitely a blessing in itself. Uh, so that's where the stages of change comes in. For those people that are still connected, when you talk to someone with that type of question, you'll see, be able to identify the stages of change. I'm no longer diabetic, but it's hard to stick to a workout plan. How do I do that? And so the thing is, is that you have to find something that you like to do. Working out is very hard for many, many people. You have to find something that you like. Um, if you enjoy walking, if you enjoy dancing, if you enjoy some type of uh, sport, uh, <clears throat> anything to just move your body. Because remember, exercise is actually worship. That's one of the ways that we have to look at it. So when we eat properly, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a form of worship because we're honoring our temples that God has loaned to us. So, and when you exercise, it's a form of worship. Like, Lord, I'm using the body that you gave, him, gave me. I'm keeping up the maintenance on it so that I can be, I'm ready and willing to do what you have called me to do. So number one, identify the things that you like to do and do those, start out slowly. 
But also remember that working out is a form of worship. I know it may feel like torture, <laughs> but it's a form of worship. So you have to make it fun and, and just identify things that you like to do. And then that, as long as you're moving, that's exercise. Well, I'd like to, to remind people, James, those who know me know that I like to run. Um, and one of the ways I motivate myself is I have running partners that even though we can't run together at this time, we text each other how we're doing. And several of us are actually in different challenges together so we can track each other and support one another. And so having an um, accountability partner is a good way to keep motivated. Another affirmation for you, James, when are you going to come back? So. <laughs> I, I can't promise me. anything, but we'll uh, <laughs> we'll look at, at scheduling James to come back and join us when we can gather in person again, so we can have the whole process of the Living Compass training um, and go through that together. So that'll be something you, for all of us to look forward to. If you want, if you want Living Compass, if you want to walk through the wellness scriptures, whatever you want, I'm here to serve. Thank you, James. We will make sure we can get you scheduled to come again. Well, I don't see any other questions coming through, so we're going to wrap up a little early tonight. But again, James, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you for uh, taking time to uh, put your family on hold for a little bit so you could join <laughs> us and, um, and uh, impart some of your knowledge and wisdom with us. You know, as we can all hear in the background, they're going to want to play when <laughs> all of this is over. So you've got your hands full getting yeah, kids ready for back. So, waiting at the top of the steps now, just sitting there patiently. <laughs> I'm sure. So we'll let you get to them. I want to thank everyone for participating tonight. And I thank hope you. you can join us next week and in future weeks. But if you would join me, let's close with a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, I give you thanks. I thank you for James taking the time to be with us tonight for the knowledge that he has gathered and is sharing with us. I thank you for this journey of life and it is challenging and it is difficult and it has twists and turns. So I thank you, God, that you bring people into our lives to help us bring balance. So I just pray for all those who have participated with us tonight in the midst of this crisis, you would help us all find balance, balance physically and spiritually and emotionally so that we can be whole persons so that we can be the children that you have called and created us to be. Be with us as we part from one another tonight, even though it's virtually. Be with us until we gather together again. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you, James. Thank you all for participating, and have a wonderful evening. Good right. night, and God bless. Bye now. All right. Be blessed, everyone.